All right, guys and gals, back in the action here. It's about that time of day again here, folks. It's Wednesday evening. It's July the 10th, 2019. My name is Joseph, by the way. And this, as always, is your nightly newsletter. Now, don't forget, guys, I help traders find high-quality trade setups using a simple three-step trading strategy that we teach and trade together every morning in our trade room. But my job tonight is a little bit different. My job tonight is extremely important. My job tonight is to identify the best levels, the best setups, the best opportunities that I'm watching for tomorrow. That's Thursday's trading session. And we have a lot to cover in tonight's video. We'll talk about some oil, some S&P. We got the NASDAQ, the gold, and that euro on the docket for tonight's video. I'm going to jump into oil because as you probably noticed, oil just kept on going today all the way back up to some major highs and that tells me one very important scenario to be ready for tomorrow let's jump into that oil first that black gold that texas tea because oil is telling us pretty much what to expect here tomorrow and we're going to plan accordingly right in tonight's video the first thing we notice here on oil is a very strong move higher anytime i see a strong move higher i i always know we're going to probably have buyers waiting to buy the dip and so i'm definitely looking for buy setups on that pullback off of these highs but there's one more thing you got to be you got to be aware of Anytime we see this much movement in one day, the following day oftentimes turns into a trading range. So really what I'm anticipating here tomorrow as we're up around that big round number, up around that July 1st high, I'm anticipating us to be going sideways a little bit here, but I'm going to be waiting patiently tomorrow to buy those dips, right? I'm looking to buy those dips. I'm also going to be keeping my eyes open here just in case everything falls apart what a reversal will look like because obviously there's a lot of potential if this thing doesn't hold these highs we may see a full one two three reversal tomorrow as well we'll talk about buying we'll talk about selling but most importantly we'll talk about the specific setups i'm watching for on the oil market tomorrow over on the s p chart here tonight oil of course looks very very strong compared to that s p s p started off extremely bullish right 8.30 Eastern Time, they released that text transcript this morning. Haven't seen that happen before. I'll make sure, make note of that for next time. So we got the that release of the transcript early this morning for Fed, you know, Fed Chairman Powell at 10 o'clock. That sent the market right rallying higher. But you'll notice, right, they got to that big round number at 3,000, and it looks like that's about where they found their resting point. This is a pretty simple scenario here. We have a bull market into a trading range. Range-bound markets are very, very simple. Buy low, sell high, and avoid the middle. So ultimately right now, because of this range, I'm looking for buy setups to buy nice and low. I'm looking for sell setups to sell high. And I, right, I'm, 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 I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't looking for a potential breakout for another leg higher tomorrow. So we'll talk about what a breakout looks like here. And then we'll also talk about, right, what a reversal might look like. Because again, all of this was basically, right, on the back of that, right, of that Fed speak today. Tomorrow, this could easily fall apart. And we'll talk about at what point I can be confident looking for a sell in this market as well. Got a lot to cover here right on that S&P. And of course the NASDAQ. NASDAQ is similar to the S&P. NASDAQ of course up at all time highs again. You can see this obvious very strong bullishness to that market and then of course it's going sideways here just above right its big round number. So the market's bullish we know we're balanced range bomb markets what do ranges tell me ranges tell me right i want to buy low i want to sell high i want to avoid that middle and focus on failures and just like the s p tonight we're going to go over a couple different setups right how do i sell off the high 
because of, co- of course that goes against the trend, right? And how do I, right? How do I buy off that low? Those are two different scenarios. Buying low is a very different, right, setup than selling high. And what does a breakout look like, right? At what point can we qualify that as a breakout? And then what's the best way to trade a breakout? Uh, because most breakouts will fail, as we saw right earlier on in this session. And then again, right? I mean, what if the ice cracks and we drop through here back down to where this day began? We'll talk about what a reversal looks like and the best ways to trade those reversals on this NASDAQ. Over on the gold, gold is a great, great chart. We have a lot, we have a lot we're looking at here on this chart tonight. I'm going to simplify it all down, right, to one very, right, very simple point here, right? We have a strong bull market. Anytime I see a strong bull market, I always know, right, I'm looking for that pullback, right? And I've got my eyes on this little choppy consolidation area here. But the one thing you'll notice is that's a pretty deep pullback, right? It's a pretty deep pullback. With those deep pullbacks, I've got three different setups I'm watching for here on gold. If we can get that pullback, I'm also going to cover, because you can see here, it looks like they might have the appetite, right, to go higher. We've got some, we got some key levels waiting up overhead. We'll talk about that later on tonight in the video. But what if we keep going higher here? What's the best way to buy a market that just won't pull back for me? We'll talk about that as well tonight on that yellow metal. So gold really has a lot for us to cover here tonight. We got trend lines, channels, ranges. We're going to talk all about those details and go over the right setups. I'm watching for the gold tomorrow. And then how about the euro? Well, it didn't, didn't get the easy way into it from last Last night's newsletter but we got the right direction on it and now we're back to being bullish here right on this euro nice big strong bull run the euro a lot like gold has a couple different things going on right now we've got that big bull move higher big bull move higher tells me I want to buy a pullback at support because that gives me low risk high reward opportunities but at the same time though anytime I see a range and that range is really going to steal the thunder right from these bulls I think because that trading range tells me exactly where I want to be trading tomorrow I want to buy nice and low I want to sell nice and high and of course we're going to talk about how to buy this market how to to sell this market these specific setups that I'm watching for and obviously right in case you've been living under a rock lately this euro has been nothing but bearish so we'll definitely talk about what it's going to take for these bears to get back in control and where their targets are going to be for tomorrow as well so euro is definitely on our radar tonight euro gold Nasdaq S&P crude oil we have a jam-packed video for you guys and gals on this nightly newsletter but before we jump into those charts and put the plan together for tomorrow. I need to remind you right before, right before I send out this video to YouTube, I send an email to our best clients. Everyone on my email list gets an email right before I publish this video on our YouTube channel and upload it to our blog. And I want to make sure you get that email so you know when our nightly newsletter goes live every evening. And it's really, really simple to join the mailing list. All I need to do is, is go to the homepage here at Sideways Markets. I'll put all the links in the description of the YouTube video. Give me your name, your email address, and then hit that subscribe button button. Now remember when you subscribe to join our mailing list your job isn't quite over yet. You still need to go in and check your email inbox because I'm going to send you a welcome email with lots of great resources so you can get the most out of our time together on this video newsletter. Now I got to warn you sometimes that welcome email gets stuck in your spam filter. So check your spam filter if you join the mailing list and you don't get the welcome email check that spam filter right because it may be there right hidden in that spam filter somewhere and when you find it make sure you whitelist us make sure you mark us as right a safe sender right or whatever it takes right on your email service so make sure you join that mailing list that way you never miss another great lesson here right on this right on this trading blog for our nightly newsletter and while I have a couple more minutes of your time would you do me a favor I need your feedback you know me I've been doing this newsletter for over 10 years here at School of Trade it's it's incredible to think I started this YouTube channel back in 2008 I still can't believe how long I've been doing this every evening with 
with you guys right Monday through Thursday evening. But the reason why I've been able to last so long is because I'm always trying to make this better. I'm always looking for new ways to help my clients succeed. And as as a as a as a treasured client of mine, right, I need to know what's the biggest obstacle in your eyes that's standing between you and becoming confident and consistently profitable. You know, we're all on this journey to becoming consistently profitable traders. We are all on different stages in that journey. Maybe you're a brand new trader and you're just getting your feet wet learning about the basics. Or maybe you're a grizzled veteran. You've been around the block, right, for 10 years and you're here because you know this is the real good stuff every evening. In your opinion, what's the biggest obstacle standing between you and becoming consistent? profitable drop me a comment in the comment section below it means the world to me that you would take a few minutes out of your time and let me know what matters most to you is it software and indicators is it trading strategy trend lines and technical analysis or is it psychology a lot of people tell me the most important thing I can help them with is containing right is, is maintaining the traders mindset so drop me a comment in the comment section below and while you're down there if you tune in every evening on this nightly newsletter Give me a thumbs up on the video tonight if you would because it's always amazing to me how much that helps to expose these videos to other traders who can definitely benefit from this as well. So two things here, drop me a comment with some feedback in ways I can help you become a better trader. Second thing, give me that thumbs up button right on the YouTube video here because it goes a long way to help other traders see this video as well. And please don't forget guys, if you have any questions along the way, I'm always here, right? I'm always here at the home office here in Los Angeles. You can always call that toll-free phone number, especially if you have any questions like the best brokers to use right now, the data feeds, the charting software that I use, or maybe you want to learn more about our free trading classes or how to get access to our trade room on a free pass. All that information I can answer for you, call that toll-free phone number anytime you guys have any questions, and I'll be here to answer the call and give you all the information that you need. But in the meantime, though, let's get to work here, right? You guys didn't come. You guys didn't come here for the introduction, right? You came here for the meat and potatoes. Let's do this. Jumping into tonight's newsletter, the first thing we'll do is let's take a look at the economic calendar here for tomorrow. Tomorrow, of course, is Thursday. It's July the 11th. Now, what do we have going on tomorrow? Tomorrow. tomorrow, we've got a couple big news events on our radar. First of all, we got that CPI number and the jobless claims report at 8.30 Eastern Time. Now, I wouldn't go too far about jobless claims. Jobless claims is definitely not going to have that big of an impact on us tomorrow. But that CPI number definitely could. The consumer prices index, right? Consumer prices sounds like inflation. And anytime I hear the word inflation, I think U.S. dollar. And when I think dollar, I think I think gold, I think euro. So metals and currencies tomorrow morning are definitely going to be something we want to be keeping our eyes on. So tomorrow morning, 8.30 Eastern time, definitely keep those eyes open tomorrow morning. And of course, after that news comes out, we've got Jerome Powell back on the stand again tomorrow. This time will be a couple doors down. I believe tomorrow is the uh, one of the various committees, right, that he's forced to testify in front of every, every, every couple months right here each year. Tomorrow, though, be aware, tomorrow won't have as much of an impact as today did. Remember, the reason why today was the big one was because today was the first time everyone got a chance to see his pre-prepared statement, right, which he actually leaked about an hour and a half early, right? You probably noticed that. 8.30, right, that, that statement got leaked, and in it, in the market, of course, responded. I don't expect to see the same level of of ba boom, right? I don't expect to see the same level of of, uh, of 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 you know fireworks tomorrow ahead of it, just because everybody kind of already knows what he's going to say. Now, with that said, like I mentioned yesterday, right? He'll spend the first 15, 20 minutes reading that pre-prepared statement, and then obviously, right, all of the all the senators, right, will come in and they'll start asking questions during that live Q and A. The live Q and A is. It's 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 rather comical, obviously, right? If you 
if you know, right, if you know how the markets work and you listen to these, these senators ask these goofy questions, but those questions oftentimes produce answers that move these markets. So I wouldn't say it's must-see TV by any means. I wouldn't set your TiVo, but I would keep your eyes open after 10.30 into 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, because as you saw today, once, right, once kind of the meat and potatoes got out of the way, then the markets, like you, like, like you saw today, were free to start moving right after that news came out. So, you know, just be careful around 10 o'clock. Oftentimes, it'll chop around a little bit around 10 o'clock when he's initially taking the stand. And then you'll see things loosen up as the as the day starts to develop. So bottom line is we get CPI number tomorrow morning, right? That CPI number, watch those metals, watch those, right? Watch those, anything basically dollar related, obviously. And then again, tomorrow, right? We're going to be tiptoeing around 10 o'clock, but keeping our eyes open for some explosive opportunities when, right, when, uh, you know, Jerome Powell answers questions and we may get some surprise answers right out of him tomorrow the rest of this i wouldn't worry about too much here tomorrow right tomorrow's a thursday we should see a pretty good day tomorrow hopefully hopefully this jerome powell speech doesn't clog things up too badly right today was obviously that big blast up and then of course we'll talk about the plan for tomorrow. And again, for tomorrow, don't forget, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, right? We get together in our trade room every morning. 8 a.m. Eastern Time, we trade the strategy every morning, Monday through Friday, usually till about 11.30, right? Once lunchtime settles in, we go to training. We'll talk more about that, right, in our free trading classes. Let's keep going. Now that you guys know the schedule for tomorrow, and again, I'm going to go over the plan here tonight, right? But tomorrow morning, it's such a huge advantage to be able to do it with me right in the trade room tomorrow morning because as you'll see the strategy is very very simple we'll discuss tonight what's not so simple is actually applying it right on a moving market so what do we know about oil what do we know about oil we know oil is bullish right anytime i see a bull market i want to buy a pullback at key levels of support what else do we know we know we have a very strong move Right. And there's a difference here. Right. You know, sometimes momentum is bullish. Right. There's lots of bullish momentum. Right. But then there's the strong move. Right. And we have that strong move. Right. That last that last hurrah here today. Right. The afternoon move, the, the afternoon move was very, very strong. And that and that tells us that. Right. Anytime we see a strong move, we should see a pullback. Right. In a retest of that high. What else do we know? What else do we know? We also know we're right up around that July 1st high. And for the most part, you know, this is, you know, yearly highs, right? And we've been a little bit higher, obviously, but not that much, right? I mean, these are these are relatively, right, high prices here. But this is very much, right, the high of this chart. It's the high of July. We had that big spike right, that went higher before, and now, of course, we're back, right, we're back up to retest that high. What does that tell us? It tells us that there's going to be a reluctance here for buyers, right? It's, it's going to take a, it, it's, it's going to take another, you know, outside influence to keep this party moving higher, right? The buyers got what they kind of, you know, quote, unquote, came for. They wanted to retest that high. They got their goal. They accomplished their mission, and now it's going to take something more to push this thing through the those highs, right, and keep going. Most important thing now is we know we have a strong move up. We know we're at a major level of resistance. I really don't want to buy up here because of that. I want to try to buy a pullback, right? I want to try to buy a pullback. So what else do we know, right? Where can I find, right, where can I find a pullback? Well, there's two more things that we know. First of all, if I mark up these highs and bring it down to that low, what is this? This is a spike in channel. It's kind of a strong strange looking spike in channel you'll notice it's not quite the it's, it's not quite the perfect looking spike in channel we talked about spike in channels by the way last night on the newsletter right remember last night we talked about once we get that right that new higher high then you mark up those highs right and you plot that low to buy off of that low so we know there is right we know the spike in channel what do spike in channels tell us spike in channels because there isn't any real deep pullback Spike in channels oftentimes give us a real deep pullback, right? So think about how that applies, right? With a strong bull trend, 
we want to buy, we know the odds are really high that we pull back, we go back to retest the high. The spike in channel tells us you might, you might want to be prepared for a really deep pullback right because there hasn't been really any pullbacks here so far and buyers are likely going to be waiting for that deep pullback now what else do we know we also know there's a small trading range on this chart why is it important because trading ranges are where volume is traded right volume exchange hands if you were to put one of those fancy dancy volume indicators right on this chart right now right if you were to put like a volume on price indicator right on this chart right now you would see all the volume likely piled up right 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 in that spot around that you know 5940 5960 area and of course right if you studied market profile if you studied auction market theory I, I don't think it's necessary to use these tools I always tell my clients if you want to know where the high volume point on that chart is look for the flat moving average look for the overlapping candlesticks right the only place in this chart with overlapping candlesticks right is that is that trading range you don't need some fancy indicator to tell you that's what the volume is right look for the overlapping right the overlapping right candlesticks right back here too right lower left hand corner there's overlapping candles that'd be another right that would be another high volume area right if you're looking at it as a volume profile all right again you don't need those fancy indicators just going to learn how to read a chart so what does that mean for me that trading range is a high volume area combine all this information now Right? We know that high volume areas are where the market will be coming in and that's where what? That's where business is done. Right? That, that's, that's, that's where business is done, right? That's where a lot of business was done earlier today and there'll be a lot more people waiting to do business there right around that 40 to 60 area here tomorrow as well. So we know we're bullish. We know we get a strong bull trend. We know we're at a major level of resistance up here. And even if we go higher, right, there's still another level waiting right above us here. So we're definitely, right, we're definitely knocking on some resistance here. A lot of movement. We need a pullback. And I'm thinking about that pullback, right, into this area down here. Because, again, I don't want to buy high, right? I want to buy low. Now, with that said, right, we also know this potential because we had such a strong movement move higher here, there's a lot of potential this market now starts going sideways tomorrow. You know, just as we saw back here, right, where it goes up and then starts going sideways, that is potential for tomorrow as well. So up going sideways as well. So really what I want to do right now is I want to talk about what we're going to do if it goes sideways. I want to cover how to buy the pullback. And then if it does go higher, right, if it does go higher here again, at this point, right, we really need to get, we really need to get a, another shot in the arm here, right? We need some sort of catalyst, right? There needs to be some, vi you know, don't, don't get me wrong, I don't want this, right? But, you know, there needs to be some violence in the Middle East. There needs to be some natural disaster. There needs to be some political announcement. There needs to be some news event, right? Something else has to come out, right, if this market's going to have the confidence right or the reason to think value is higher so most important thing I think we should do is is prepare for the range the range is most likely here tomorrow now I don't know enough about the range yet but once I know once I start seeing the market go sideways here I'm gonna find that range once I have that range and you'll see how I do this on other charts tonight once I have that range the size of that range is going to help me find right a another buy zone here tomorrow. I don't have enough information yet, unfortunately, right. But once we have right, once we have that range, I'll use that range, and that will help me find the buy zone down here. All right. So if we do end up going sideways, there will be an updated chart, and we'll do this tomorrow. Obviously, once we know more information, we'll do it together in the trade room. But there will be a buy zone down there. Okay. Now, if we see the market go sideways, okay, there are two ways to trade it. One is to buy the low. Right? We're bullish. I want to be a buyer. How do I buy that low? I like to use a pattern called a failure pattern. It's called a two-try failure. In a range-bound market, when the sellers try taking this thing lower, those bears are probably going to try to sell a pullback. When that pullback confirms, now we know where their stops are and we can literally buy right into that failure. So again, imagine now, right? Imagine now, sorry about that, wrong button there. Imagine now we go sideways up here, right? Here we are, we're going sideways on the chart and then we see a pullback. 
right? That pullback will bring the moving average over. The sellers will likely try to sell off of that moving average and send the market lower, right? And we'll talk about what to do if they are successful at that. And then at that point now, now we know where stops are, right? Once I know, once I see where their stops are, now I know exactly where my entry should be, right? Where their stops are is where my entry is going to be, right? Right above those highs. So when I see the market pull back, this again is the range scenario. When the market pulls back from that range, I'm looking for that failure pattern so I can then buy into those stops. Now at the same time too, we can oftentimes buy that pullback, right, as it pulls back as well. Okay, this is one of my favorite combination setups. It's a two try failure into a pullback setup, to try failure, right, into a pullback setup. Okay, so that's if the market goes sideways. Now, at the same time here, right, let's say we do go sideways, right, let's say we do go sideways, and then we break out. What are some options as the market tries to go higher? And remember, right, this is gonna be this is gonna be tough stuff going higher here, right? We're at July's high. We really don't want to buy through the highs there. So I'm not gonna try to predict that breakout, but what are some options? How do you short it, first of all? Because that's what I'm looking for, right? If we go higher here, I want to sell it back into that range, right? I'm gonna call the bluff of the buyers, and there's one very specific pattern that I like to use, and that's called a nested failure. Once I see the market try to go higher, I'm gonna let the buyers try to buy once, let them try to buy twice, and once I see those buyers have tried twice, then I look to sell into their failure. This is called a nested variation of that two try pattern, right? So again, if we go lower, right, we go lower, it's a seller failure back in, if we go higher, it's a buyer's try once, buyer's try twice, a nested failure back in. But this is a bull market. What if it keeps going higher? What are some opportunities for me to buy this thing? There are two patterns I use for breakouts. One's called a two try breakout, where we break out, the bears now try once, the bears try twice at a higher price, we buy into those stops. It's called a two try breakout. It's kind of like the failure pattern, but in the opposite direction, right? So now we've got the move going through the highs. I'm not gonna buy the breakout here, but if I see those higher highs, now I know I've got that pullback now after that second try, nice reliable breakout higher. And then one of my favorite patterns, is what I call a one, two, three, right? A one, two, three breakout. A one, two, three breakout, again, in that trading range, it's a one, two, three, okay? If we start seeing that big break out of that range now, again, you don't wanna buy high, right? I wanna buy low. Let's mark up that high, mark up that high right there, bring it down to that low, and let's buy off of that low. There's your sweet spot right there. Does that make sense? Right, so if it breaks through the high of this range now, it's a one, two, three breakout. One, two, three meaning one, two, three, right? One, two, three breakout. Then we're not buying high, right? We're buying low, buying at the low of that new hidden channel. So I'm anticipating a range tomorrow. Those are the best scenarios I see for that trading range. But what if we don't get the range, right? What if this thing just pulls back? There's, there's, really, there's really three different types of pullbacks that I'm watching for. One is going to be a very deep pullback. If we get that really deep pullback, now that momentum's going to be very strong for the bears. You know, but again, like I mentioned, a lot of people are going to be interested in buying that pullback down around that high volume area that we discussed earlier. But again, I don't just want to buy it if momentum is really strong like that right? Just like I can't sell it just because we're at resistance right now, right? I only sell, right, when I have selling momentum, right? So if we pull back and we're really bearish at that point, I want to be a buyer on this, but what's the safest way? Well, the safest way to buy it is, is to make sure we let those buyers, sorry, those sellers, excuse me, try twice. One try, two try, 
and then back up from there. This again is that nested variation and the reality is because of that spike in channel, I'm anticipating a real deep pullback and with that deep pullback, I want to let those bears kind of tire themselves out, right? I'm going to wrap that rope right around their neck. Let them sell once, let them sell twice. You'll notice these are higher highs here and then we're buying right into those stop losses for what really should be the best setup of the day because of the low risk, high reward nature of that pullback. Another thing you want to consider here tomorrow is, is a two-legged pullback. These are very common in deep pullbacks as well. So watch that trend line coming down and look for that trend line to act as a key level of support, right? We call these two-legged pullbacks or two LPs. So keep your eyes on that tomorrow morning as well. And then how about a shallow pullback? Right? We may see a shallow pullback here, right? A, a pullback, moving average comes over. I've got those sellers now trying to sell, right? And I'm buying into that failure. I'm buying that pullback for a retest of that high. Failure pattern, pullback pattern. Target is back to retest that high. All right, guys, and that may end up as the trading range, right? That may be kind of the beginning right of the right of the range tomorrow right so just keep your eyes on that as well so wow we have covered a lot so far right we're digging deep into this video right now i've talked about ranges we've talked about deep pullbacks shallow pullbacks breakouts failures right pullback patterns i have so much more i want to share with you guys but i got to keep going in this video because i have a lot more to cover so if you want to get a much deeper dive into this whole entire strategy here's what i'll do i'll put a link in the upper right hand corner I'll also put a big red button right below the video tonight on our blog here at sideways markets right grab that link that link I'll pop up here in a moment will be your free trading class inside that free trading class I talk about my four favorite entry patterns my three-step trading strategy the time frames I use the setups that I use right and you'll see hundreds of examples of all of these patterns on real charts right tonight I'm just kind of anticipating what I'm waiting for tomorrow, but as part of that free trading class I just mentioned, right up a right hand corner for that link, right, you'll get access, right, to see what those patterns look like, right, when they really happen. Now we're talking. You guys grab that free trading course. In the meantime, let's keep going. From the from the oil now over to the S&P. Now we've talked a lot about ranges so far, right? We just talked about ranges on crude oil, and this is pretty much what we're dealing with right now, right? We had a strong bull move up. That strong bull move up tells me that the buyers definitely have the edge in this market right now, right? It's a range bound market. What does a range bound market tell me to do? It tells me to buy low. It tells me to sell high, right? And it tells you most importantly here to avoid that middle, right? So I want to buy low. I want to sell high, right? And I want to avoid the middle. And of course, you'll notice I'm using the size of this range. And I talked about this earlier on the crude oil chart. I'm using the size of that range to project the sell zone, right? And project the buy zone right down below. So those are key components here, right? I want to sell up in the sell zone. I want to buy down in the buy zone. And if you're wondering, you know, how do I find the range, right? How do I find, right? How do I find these, these buy and sell zones? We cover all of these details in our membership classes here at School of Trade. And you can learn more on our website at schooloftrade.com. I'll put all the links in the description, right, of this YouTube video. So we know we're bullish and we know we're into a trading range range, buy low, right, sell high, and avoid that middle. And there's one thing that really stands out on this chart, and you'll notice it in the important clues here today, and that is that recent strong move, right, that strong move right there. Now, anytime we have a strong move in one direction, we know we're going to probably see a retest of the low. You know, and this goes both ways, right, because if the market is bullish, and then I see a real strong move going higher, right? I know that momentum, we're probably not going to get that deep of a pullback. It'll probably pull back and retest that high again. Where things get more confusing though, right? Where things get confusing is, is when the momentum is bullish 
and then we see that strong move against the trend. This is where a lot of traders get in trouble, right? They they want to be a buyer, right? We want to be a buyer going with that trend, but at the same time though, right, we have to respect that short-term momentum because anytime I see that much strength in one direction, right, it's probably going to roll over and do it again, right? It'll give me that second leg, then I can be a buyer, right, going back up to retest that high, right? So when I see this big move here, right, that tells me I want to be a buyer overall. Right. There's a, you know, there's obviously that the Fed this morning signaled they're going to they're going to cut rates later on this year. And that's what led to this big bullish move. So fundamentals and technicals are both suggesting this is a bull market. But then we see this strong shot lower. Right. That shot lower tells me we're going to probably see those sellers try to finish off that move at the very least to get back down and retest that low around that 88 area, right? You know, 88, 89, 90 area, down around those lows. So I do expect there to be a move lower, but that's where we want it to be, right? We want to be buying low anyways. So be very careful calling this a bear market, right, just because we get that deep pullback. So we know we have bullishness, we know we're range bound, and we also know that we have that, right, that kind of strong bear move down. I want to buy low, right? I want to buy nice and low. So what's the best type of pattern that I can use to do that, right? So first of all, let's talk about the best pattern we can use, right, to buy that low here. Again, stay away from that middle. Some of the hardest parts of ranges are staying away from the middle of the range. You don't want anything to do with that middle. First things first is, right, is we're thinking about, okay, how deep is this pullback, right? Is it a shallow pullback? Do we run down to that low? If we run down to that low, I can use that failure pattern into that pullback pattern right, and buy back into that range, right? I can use that combination of failure, right, into a pullback. I let the market try to go lower. They get where they're trying to go. I wait for those sellers now to sell off the highs, right, or sell off the pullback. I know where their stops are, and I can now buy into those stops, right? You're literally buying right into those stops. Then don't chase after it. You don't want to buy in the range, right? You want to buy it on the pullback, right? You want to buy it on that pullback. So that's right, those are the two key setups for us, right? Those are the two key setups if we get a relatively shallow pullback. But what if it really takes off the downside, right? What if we really get that second leg and it hits, you know, for example, if I draw this trend off the high, off of that low, right? That's a nice little hidden channel down there. The problem is though, if we get that run lower, right? This is going to be one heck of a move lower, right? If we get this little strong move down now, what is that? That's going to feel like a bear market, right? And all that momentum now, right? We need to respect. We need to respect that momentum. And so what I'll do is I'll let the bears try once, let them try twice, and then look to buy back up from there, right? Let those bears, just let them tire themselves out, right? Like a toddler, right? Just go do your thing, back, you know, do your thing, sellers. Try once, try twice. You know, once you're, once you've, once you've, once you've wasted all your ammunition on that, then I'll buy right into those stop losses, right? This is a whole lot less stressful, right, than trying to pick that bottom. Right? It's really difficult to pick a bottom when it really runs like that. Right? Because every time it goes up, the bears want to run you out. And oftentimes they'll run you out and send it back up again, won't they? Right? So you don't want to try to buy into that move lower. You want to wait for it as it go down, right? That's a lot of momentum now. Let those bears try once, let them try twice. And again, higher highs here. Right? I always tell my clients, right, you want to you want those higher highs because you want, you know, sellers want to sell high, right? You want that, you want that higher high before you go buying it. Once you get that higher high, now we know where stops are and we can buy into those stops. So those are the two big kind of criteria here, right? Is it a shallow pullback or is it a really deep pullback? Now, what about going higher here? Now we touched about this on oil, right? If we go up, we're bullish. So I have to wait for the one, two to sell back down, right? That's the nested variation, right, of that pattern. Why do I have to wait twice? Because we're bullish, right? Momentum is bullish. So for me to want to sell this, I've got to let these buyers, right, exhaust themselves. I've got to let these breakout buyers who obviously don't know how to read a chart, I've got to let them buy a couple times, right, into that high. So now I have some juice. 
right? Now I can sell into their stops, right? Because when I sell into the already committed buyers, when I sell into their failure, what happens when a buyer gets stopped out? They become a seller. Right? There's no way around it. If you're already in the trade long and I, right, and I sell right into your stop loss, because it's easy to know what stop loss is, you know, I always tell my clients, right, only rookies are buying the highs and rookies always use what? Tight stops. In fact, usually too tight of a stop. And so when I see buyers trying once, trying twice up here, right, to buy these highs, we know these are not professional buyers here. So we know the stops are sitting right below those lows, and we know when those rookies realize they're wrong, they're going to panic, right, and they're going to get out, and we can sell into it. The problem is, though, is that you don't want to try to use that same failure pattern, right? You wouldn't use a standard two tried failure because what's going to happen is the buyers are going to come in and try it again right below it, right, a trap low on that. That's not a very safe bet, right? What you want is you want to see it go up one, two, and then back down from there. Now, what does a breakout look like? Breakout, there are two types of breakouts, right? One is the aggressive one. It's that strong move up, the one, the two, and the go, right? One, two, go. Make sure those sellers, and again, I keep saying this, right? Higher highs on this. It starts off with a strong break higher. Bears try to sell it once. Bears try to sell it twice. We know where their stops are, and we're buying into those stops. What I like to do on these types of setups is because that stop's getting run, I'll quickly tighten up my stop and let this thing go as far as it'll go. And where do we think that target might be? That target might be a big measured move, right? Take that leg there, project it there, right? And you can easily see now, obviously, this is putting us at a very high price, right? But if, again, if we get another catalyst tomorrow, right? Who knows what Jerome Powell speaking tomorrow morning again, right? That puts us at 30.25, which is, I mean, if, you know, it's, it's obviously unrealistic right now. But, hey, we thought, we thought 3,000 was unrealistic earlier on this year as well. So I'm not calling that 30.25 just yet. But if we do see that push through, though, that's where I'll leave that runner. And then, of course, the one, two, three breakout is the one, two, three breakout, right? Mark up that high, mark up that high, mark up that low. You got it, right? And then we're buying that pullback from there. Okay, what's the difference? The difference is, is a strong break, one, two, buy. The other one is a break, a pullback, and a go, Right? That initial break doesn't need to be as strong in that second situation. Mark up that high, mark up that high, mark up that low, right? And we're buying, yep, we're buying off of that low. That's the sweet spot right there. All right, guys? Now, what if I'm wrong about this? Or I'm not wrong, but what if the market decides we're done, we're over this? How do we turn bearish, right? What does a bear market look like? A bear market will do the same thing the bulls have to do. Right? The bulls have to get their one, two, three breakout. So do the bears. I have to see a strong move down, a pullback to the moving average, and a strong move off the moving average. This is called a one, two, three breakout or a one, two, three reversal. Okay, once I see that one, two, three, and again, one, two, three, I do want to see it pull back to the moving average, by the way. That confirms sellers are in and committed. I mark up that low, I mark up that low, and then up at that highest point up there, right? All the way up at that highest point at the beginning of the move, that becomes, right, my hidden channel, and that's where I'm waiting to take my short. Where's my target? My target is now back down around that 71 and a quarter. So good stuff there on the S&P. And again, we're talking about failures. We're talking about nested failures, one, two, three breakouts, right? Grab that free trading class in the upper right-hand corner to see hundreds of examples, right, of this strategy in action. And you, 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 everyone loves that free class. I get so much great feedback from that free class every week. So I know you'll love it as well. How about some NASDAQ right now? So NASDAQ is very similar here, right? Very similar to uh, the S&P. The only difference from the NASDAQ is is I can't quite tell yet where that triangle is. We do know on the NASDAQ, the strong bull move up, right? That strong bull move up pretty much ends, right, with this going sideways. You can see there's definitely a, right, there's definitely sideways movement on this. So we know we're bullish and we know we're into a range, right? What does a range tell me? A range tells me to buy low, right? It tells me to sell high. It tells you to avoid the middle, right? I take the size of that range, 
the size of that range helps me determine the buy zone and the sell zone. And of course, just at the S&P, I want to buy low, right? I want to sell high. And of course, we'll also keep, right, keep our eyes out for those breakouts. Want to buy low, want to sell high, I want to avoid the middle. The NASDAQ also has that same very strong, right, counter trend move. So we're anticipating another potential strong, right, move back lower, which is actually quite interesting because you've got that reversal line, that original high of day right around 78.70 there which might just end up becoming a key level here tomorrow, right, once we get down into that buy zone. So much like the S&P here, we know we're inside of a range, right? I want to see this market pull back. If it's a shallow pullback, I'll use that failure pattern, that two-try failure, right, into a pullback setup going higher. If it's a deeper pullback, again, right, deep, deep pullback here now, now let those bears try. How many times? One try, higher high. To try, right? What do we call that? We call it a nested failure, right? And why is that one different? Because of momentum, right? Momentum will be a whole lot stronger as the market pulls back. And then what if, our, what if we sit in the middle? What do we do? We sit on hands, right? What if we go higher here? We go higher, what can we do here? We can sell it with that nested pattern, right? The one, the two for the buyers. Why do I want the buyers to try twice? Because it's bullish. I don't want to sell. We don't just sell at resistance just because it's resistance. We sell at resistance in a bear market, right? That's the thing. Momentum is way too bullish right now just to blindly sell that top, right? So I want to wait for, let the buyers try once, let them try twice. Once I, right, again, anyone who's buying up there is a rookie, by, right? Is, 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 a, is a rookie, so we know those rookies, right? I know I did at least. When I was a rookie, I was buying high. I didn't care where I was. I was just buying signals, right? Trading signals. Okay, we don't just trade signals. We have to know where that signal, and I hate the word signal, right? Signal or setup, it needs to be a it needs to be the right situation, right? I, I don't care if I get the indicator cross and the moving average this, right, and the and the and the red dot shows up and no, the, the indicators are gonna lead me in the wrong direction if I'm using those indicators at the at that high. Right, and so what I look to do is, is I want to go up. I want to let a buyer try once, buyers try twice, right, and then sell it back down in. Right? How do we break out? What's a breakout look like? Right? Breakout, of course. Right? Strong move up. Strong move up. That's the key, right? First one, two try breakout. Strong move up. Bears try once. Bears try twice. We're buying into those stops, right? Higher high. Bears try once. Bears try twice. We're buying into those stops. Or, right? Maybe it's just a, a one, a two, and a three, right? That's a lot that's a lot calmer, right? It doesn't require that big breakaway. It just requires it to hold that pullback and jump. Once it jumps, now we know where our channel will be. We'll mark up that low. And again, you'll notice again, I'm taking this trend line I draw off the highs and I'm bringing it down to that major low, right? Not not this low. Okay, so please make sure you notice that small detail. It's that low. Sometimes they'll line up, but a lot of times they won't. So it's important that you know the difference there. Now, once we see that channel, now we look to buy the low of that channel. And usually, just so you know, right, just so you know, usually that pullback, right, if you kind of think of it this way, that pullback is usually going to be that failure into pullback combination, right? So imagine now, right, imagine now that you know, kind of the zooming in on that area right there, right? Uh, all right. Imagine now that pullback ends up being that failure, right, into that pullback combination setup, all right? And again, I'm just drawing this up right now, but if you want to see a lot more examples and learn all those setups, right, grab that free trading class, right, and learn all about it. Let's keep going. Oh, last but not least, right, how do we turn bearish? What's a bear market look like? Bear market be what? Strong move down. Number two, pull back to the moving average. Number three, keep on going, right? One, two, three, reversal. Remember though, right, if they struggle here, if they struggle there, we're, we're buying that failure, right? We're buying that thing if they can't keep this thing going lower. It's not a reliable sell. Just because you see it go lower does not mean it's a bear market. It's got to hold that pullback after it goes lower or else going to keep on retesting that high, right? Buyers want to buy low. The buyers are waiting down here, right? So as we go lower, show me you mean it. Right? Show me you can hold that pullback. Then let's mark up that low, mark up that low, mark up that high, bingo, and we'll sell. Yep, we'll sell 
off that high. So it's a relatively easy plan. It just takes patience, right? It takes patience. You know, and like I mentioned earlier, you'll, you'll notice the strategy, the setups I use are very, very simple, but what's not so easy is applying it to a real chart, which is why I think you'll love that free course I mentioned earlier, because you'll see a lot of real examples of these strategies, right? And of course, you can trade it with me every morning, right, in our trade room. Let's keep going. How about a gold here right now? So as we look at gold right now, gold is running hot, right? Word is out, right? Word is out. They're gonna be cutting rates. What, what what's, 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 What's going to be responsible? What will, what will, what the, what will the, the uh, reply be to cutting rates? Right, you cut rates. What is that? Right, it's it's bad for the dollar. What's bad for the dollar is is good for gold. Right. So what's what lower rates? Right, bad for the dollar. Right, dollar becomes less valuable. Gold becomes more valuable. Right. Everybody's running to safety in this yellow metal. What do we know about gold right now? Um, we know that gold, first of all, is bullish. Right. Anytime I see a bull market, right, I always want to buy at support. I want to buy at support. What else do we know? It's a very strong move higher here. And anytime I see a strong move, I get a lot more confidence about buying that pullback. Right. As opposed to, right, you know, again, if I see a market that is just kind of lazy, that's bullish. Right. That's bullish. But I would expect a much deeper pullback on that type of market than a market doing this. Right. That's that's uber bullish right? Ultra bullish, right? I see a real strong move like that. I know people are going to be guaranteed coming to buy this and they're going to want to go back and retest that high. So I can be more confident. I can be more aggressive when I see the market with a strong move just recently. Okay. What else do we know? We also know that we have this push off the low, two legs and three legs. Okay, now this three leg here right now, right, you'll notice we're right up around that measured move, right? And you'll notice, right, I'm drawing off that major low, right, that major low. One of the things we talk about in our video classes here at School of Trade is that when it comes to finding symmetry, you always want to go back and find the lowest point of that move, right? This is the lowest point of that move, which is why I'm not drawing it with this leg right there right? You know, very, very common question would be, why don't you call that the measured move? And it might be, right? I mean, you know, nothing's ever guaranteed, right? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong just as often as I am I'm right. The good news is when I'm wrong, right, I lose less than I make when I'm right, right? That's the business of day trading. So the idea here is we take the low of that move. That's one. That's two. Obviously, they blew through it, right? And then this is third, right? This is kind of like a, it's kind of like an Elliott Wave right, sequence, right? One, two, three, four, five, right? This is your one, two, three, four, five, right? Waves, waves one and five are oftentimes symmetrical. And if it's a really strong trend, right, then waves three and five are oftentimes symmetrical. And if you're wondering, you know, do we use Elliott Wave in our trade room? The answer is yes and no. You know, uh, Elliott Wave is a very subjective way of looking at the charts, right? It's, 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 it's very interpretive. Um, but the theories, the Elliott Wave theory, the Elliott Wave sequence, right, the third wave being the strongest, right, the first and fifth waves being similar, those hold true. So, you know, it's like anything else in trading, right? I, like every other trade before me, I'm just standing on shoulders of giants before me, right? I'm using strategies I've already learned in the best ways that I see them working in today's markets. So I don't think it's necessary to go out there and start learning how to count your five wave sequences because most traders are not going to have success that way, especially day trading. Uh, day trading is all about short term momentum, short term momentum, right? It, you know, long term trading, absolutely want to break out some Elliott wave. Right, that's great. But short-term trading, though, the different theories, right, are going to work. But again, I wouldn't apply it too literally, right? I wouldn't apply it too literally. So we pick and choose kind of what works best for short-term trading. And this is one example of that right now, right? You can easily see one, two, three, four, five. And we should be right up, right, around the tail end of this fifth wave. Now, again, right, if this is so strong and it wants to keep going, right, it'll be hunting for that next level. Speaking of which, right, Right, that next level is back up at 1426.8. So as you can see here, we have quite a bit of space here to run. And look what's actually happening right here. If I go a little bit further on this, 
right? If I go out a little bit further on this, you can actually see what's happening here. We're actually rotating back and forth around this range, up, down, up, down. So the reality is there's a good chance this market keeps going, right? Only problem right now is I have reason to believe right now, right, that we've reached, at least in the short term, right, a bit of a top. And so I don't want to be buying here, right? That's kind of the moral of the story, right? We're very high on the chart. We have reason to believe that buyers will want to take some profit here soon, and we should probably wait for a pullback. Okay, what else do we know here? We also know the market spent a lot of time inside of that range right here, right? Now, we talked about this earlier, right? If you like market profile or auction market theory or volume profile and whatever the case may be, right, you put a volume tool on this, all of, right, not all the volume, but most of the volume, the high volume for today will likely be right around that 1410 area. And of course, that's where most business was done. So we expect, right, a lot of people are going to want that as the area to buy that pullback, right? That's a big clue. What else do we know here? We also know we have those highs here. I'm lining up off of that low right there. And I've also got kind of a hidden low right here. This could easily be a multi-tiered channel. For the most part, though, really at this point, I'm using this high. Right? And all I know right now is those two highs. I can bring it down to that low, right? And that now gives me, look at how nice that all lines up right there, right? It lines up right inside that high volume area. It's a nice deep pullback coming off the measured move, coming off where we think, at least this point, where we think that traders will be taking their profit. Now, what if the price keeps going higher? And what if we get the pullback, right? Those are the two most likely scenarios here for us, right, on the gold. We know where we want to be buying right now. And so a lot of this has to do with, you know, how deep, right, how deep is the pullback, right? How deep is that pullback? So let's do this, right? Let's say, for example, we get a shallow pullback, right? Nice little shallow pullback here, right? Shallow pullback. Moving average comes over. Sellers try to sell into it, right? And we're buying into their failure, right? We're buying into their stops. We're buying that pullback, right? And we're trying to go back up, right? And retest that high, right? It's a failure pattern. It's a pullback pattern, right? So again, we pull back, not too deep, right? But deep, you know, deep enough to make it interesting, right? We pull back, moving average comes over, sellers try to sell off the moving average, right? We know it's a bull market. We should not be selling in a bull market. We should be looking for those sellers to fail in a bull market. And of course, we have that great sequence, that failure, right, into those pullback patterns, right, going higher. What if we really pull back, right? Two different ways to think about it. One would be that two-legged pullback, right up and over and in, okay, two-legged pullback, or as I call it, the 2LP, right, 2LP for one leg, two leg, draw that trend line over. And like I said last night on the video last night, right, you always want to make sure with those two-legged pullbacks, you have some, some daylight, right, in between the trend line, right, and that pullback, right? You should be able to see the black right behind, right, that, that pullback. So that's one option too as well. Or maybe we just shoot lower here, right? Really deep pullback, get that moving average, right? Now that moving average will come over. The bears now need to try twice, right? Once, twice, and then go from there, right? So again, remember, it's all about how the market pulls back. You know, I tell this to my clients all the time. It's not the pattern that's the most important thing. The pattern just says now get in, right? It's what happens leading up to the pattern. Right. And that's not just trading. That's in life. Right. I mean, everything is, you know, the couple days before the big event. Right. The couple hours before you did. Right. It's it's all what happens leading into it. So as we look at this chart right now. Right. If it's a shallow pullback, it's a straight failure and back up. If it's a really deep pullback. Right. Make those bears prove it to me. Right. Once twice. See, remember, when the market really pulls back like that, right, that, those sellers, they're going to have the confidence now. They're going to start beating their chest, right, saying, ah, we're going to get this sucker, and they're going to try to send this thing lower, right? We got to make them try and fail. Let them try once, let them try twice, and we can buy up from there. Again, once, twice, higher high, buying into those stops. Okay, now, don't forget to, don't forget to, there is potential here. It doesn't look likely right now, but there is potential here. This could go sideways, right? If it does go sideways, not a lot changes, 
But just remember though, once we see that range, we're going to use that range to create some additional support levels down here tomorrow morning, right, in our trade room. But no matter what happens though, if it does go sideways, look for that one try, look for that two try, let those bears try once, let them try twice. Then we know the breakout sellers are committed, the pullback sellers are committed, and now we're looking for that buy now, right, going back up to retest that high. Or what if it keeps going higher? Right? If this thing keeps going higher here, if it keeps going higher now, I've got to be thinking about traps now. Right? If this thing keeps going higher, we are going to abandon this measured move. Right? If we see this thing keep going higher here, now we've got that leg. Right? Basically, wave three is equal to wave five. Right? And that puts us, surprise, right up. And again, not what I'm expecting tomorrow, but, you know, like, like any other professional, I've got to be ready for it. Right? I can't just bury my head in the sand and say, no, it's not going to happen. Right? I, I want to be ready for it just in case it does happen. Right? I don't care if I'm wrong. Right? I want to be, be profitable. Right? You know, it's, it's not being right or wrong. Right? It's just being in the green. That's all that matters at the end of the day. And even if I do the right job and, I, and the market is something different, I'd be ready for it. So if we go higher here, we got to know where our objective is. Okay, that's the key. If we do keep going higher, now I have to ask myself, okay, where are we going to go, right? Because most of the time when the market's trending, we're going to hit some sort of measured move, some symmetry set up there. And I would imagine that symmetry, right, at that 1427 area, right, is going to be overhead. There are really a couple of things I'm looking for, but really the biggest thing is, the big concern is this is very high. Right, we're very high and we're running into major resistance. What's the best pattern to look for when I'm concerned about buying high? What do you think? What's the best pattern for me when I'm worried about buying too high? A trap pattern. So here's what I want to see. As I go higher here, I'm looking for a trap. Right? I'm looking for a trap set up as we go higher to buy that trap. That's the pattern you want to see in the short term. Okay, that's the, that's, that's the pattern you want to see in the short term. Or, right, we go higher and we find a new channel, right? Let's say, for example, we roll higher here and we just keep on kind of rolling higher here, right? If it keeps on running higher and we don't get that trap low, treat this like any other bull market into a major level of resistance, right? Wait for the pullback, the failure, and the back up. Or... If it's a real deep pullback, right? Deep pullback, one try, two try, back up, right? Or if it's a one, two, three reversal, right? Draw off the highs, right? Mark up that low, and we're selling off that high. Do you see how all the stuff we've talked about today keeps getting reused over and over again? Like I mentioned earlier, it's the, it's the, the strategy itself is very, very simple. And in my trade room every morning, repetition continues to hone that knife of success. That's the way you become a successful trader. Trading is not about fancy indicators and complicated algorithms. Trading is about understanding the fundamentals of the markets. Buyers want to buy low. Sellers want to sell high. Momentum is so important, right? Because it gives it gives confidence, right, to both sides of the market, right? By knowing those fundamentals, then it's just a matter of applying the patterns, drawing the trend lines correctly, right, and waiting patiently for the right setups. That's why I always encourage my clients, even though they learn the strategy in our video classes, to come trade it with me in the morning because, right, I want to show you to do it the right way. All right, so now we're looking pretty good here. We got gold ready to go. We know what a reversal looks like. We know what a pullback looks like. Let's keep going. Let's wrap things up here now, right, on that euro. Euro is a great, great chart. There's a couple things here on this euro. First of all, right, we know we're bullish, right? We're definitely bullish here. You can see here that one, two, three breakout, right? They mark up the high. They mark up that low. And surprise, right? They buy the low, right, of that channel. Is anybody surprised? I hope not. I hope not, right? So you go the one, two, three. Again, mark up that high, right, off that low down there. Bring it down to that low. And surprise, right? Buyers are waiting to buy off of that low. So we know we're bullish, right? We know we're bullish. I've had a strong move up. Right, and I've got a higher high. That strong move up of that higher high now, what does it tell me? Mark up those highs 
and look at how well it fits off that low. That's a beautiful little hidden channel right there. I love that hidden channel. That's a great, great uh, tip of the hat here for us on the Euro tomorrow. That's some we're watching here. What else do we know here? We, all co we can also see if you kind of look closely at this, right? We go up, down, up, down, up, down, and up. These are the little details that really mean big business in trading right yes there is that higher high but before we got that higher high you can see for yourself right this was very right sideways right markets going sideways right as we right as we go right, as we go higher what does a range tell me to do range tells me now to use the size of that trading range to find that level of resistance which you can see clearly they held right there and then find that area of support Boy, that support really lines up nicely with the low of that channel, doesn't it? That's a great spot right there. So we know we're bullish. We want to buy at support. We know we have a range, right? And we know we have a hidden channel. Okay? Let's let's play, let's let's put the game together now, right? Let's put the, let's put the plan together now. As we pull back, right? As we pull back, keep your eyes open now, right? As we go lower, keep your eyes open for that two-legged pullback. Right, those are notorious for ranges, right? Two-legged pullback, right, off of that low, right? Keep your eyes on that deep, deep pullback, right? Nested, one, two, and up from there. Or maybe we get lucky. Maybe it simply comes in, nice, easy pullback there. Sellers come off that low, right? It's a failure into a pullback, right? And we're back up to retest the high. Those are three types of patterns we're watching for on that pullback. We've learned a lot about those patterns, right, already. Don't forget, if we sit here inside that range, you do what? Nothing, nada, right? Sit on those hands, right? Get comfortable and wait for what? Wait for that breakdown. Let those bears try twice. Then we buy with that two try failure pattern, right? What if the market tries to go higher? Right? What if it goes higher? Same idea as gold, right? Find that lowest part of that move, draw that, draw that first leg, there's second leg, sorry, second leg, and then third leg from there. What does that tell us? We got resistance overhead. So we gotta be careful up here, right? Can I sell this by the way? Can we go up? Can I sell it? You can. But again, you want that nested sell off the high, right? Because why the market is bullish. What's a breakout look like? Breakout, one, two, three, breakout. You got it. Mark up that high. Mark up that low. Mark up that high. There's your sweet spot, right? Buying that pullback. And again, that pullback is oftentimes a failure into a pullback setup, right? That kind of zoomed in on that area right there is a failure, right? Into a pullback going higher there. Uh, what else do we know? Oh, in case you missed it. We happen to be a li just just a little bit oh, oh yeah just a little bit bearish in the long term right little bit bearish there in the long term so this could easily be I'm sure some folks right now are saying Joe are you serious buy this euro are you crazy look at all this bearishness this is just a pullback it's a pullback we're going right back down to that low you might be right you definitely might be right but right now though we're not bearish right now so here's what we need. We know those bears, they want to get back down to that 1255 area, right? How do they do that? First of all, we've got to see a strong move down. Then we've got to get that pullback to the moving average. Then from there, yeah, they got to hold it, right? They got to hold it because if they don't, you know what's going to happen, right? Guys like me, people like right, people like yourselves as well are going to be buying off of that low. They've got to hold that pullback, right? Get that runner right get that runner going lower mark that low mark that low mark that high and now we're looking to sell right off of that high all right target is of course back down to retest those lows holy holy camole we have talked a lot about this stuff tonight we got a lot in this video hope you learned a ton hope you use this information to earn a ton tomorrow and i'll tell you right now we are just scratching the surface here at school of trade we dive even deeper into this by doing it together every morning in our trade room so come out and join me tomorrow morning at the opening bell as an advanced member it's easy to get started just register right on the website right below my ugly mug here you want to join the advanced 
advanced classes here at School of Trade. The advanced course includes the beginner, the intermediate, and all the advanced video classes. You'll have unlimited access to all of our video classes, and every morning we trade the strategy together. If you're not ready yet to be a member, that's perfectly fine by me. We get a great free trial here at School of Trade. As part of that free trial, you'll get a free pass to join our trade room as a guest. You'll also get that free trading class, which, which, which covers my three-step strategy and all four of my favorite entry patterns. Guys and gals, we are just getting this party started every evening on this newsletter. The real work happens tomorrow. Hopefully, I'll see you there with me tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. If you have any questions, call. Use that live support tool on the lower right-hand corner of this website and ask questions if you have any questions. But in the meantime, get some rest. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning, opening bell. If we don't see you guys tomorrow morning at the opening bell, we'll see you guys same time, same place tomorrow afternoon. For our nightly newsletter, my name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will you? And be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.